Okay, people. So I am here with Johannes Grenzen Furver. Grenz Furtner. Grenz Furtner. Yeah. Okay. I, I, it's, All right. It's, it, you know, it's, know, it's close. It's really, close. It's, it's not bad. I mean, it's, even for, for people who speak German or Austrian German, it's a long and complicated name. And, <laughs> and for all people who are not from Germany or Austria, like everything sounds like a war crime in German. So it's, <laughs> it's yeah, Johannes yeah. Grenzfurtner. That's how it ah. would be correctly pronounced. But of course, it's just like, <laughs> I don't even care. <laughs> But it's it's so great to be on the show, Kevin. Thank you so much for having me. No, thanks for thanks for joining me. So Johannes has got a new film called Masking Threshold, which mm -hmm. you you directed, produced, you co-wrote with Samantha Lenhard. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, it's we're, uh, we're... it's crazy. Uh, I it hope is. so. <laughs> it, I mean, like I, I, I just finished watching it. Oh, really? I, okay. So it's yeah, super I, fresh. Yeah, that's the that's the reason why, right? I, okay. I don't want to watch it a week in advance and then mm -hmm. you know be like, oh, did that happen? Like, was it? Yeah, yeah, so I try yeah. and get as fresh as I can. Oh, <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? And, but I, and I, 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 I assume you will need some time to process all of that. There's it's <laughs> it's re it's really interesting because. My, my film had world premiere at Fantastic Fest in September, okay. which was completely kind of like bl blowing my mind. We were like, what the fuck? They are showing my, my crazy little film at Fantastic Fest. <laughs> and I was just like, that was, what? Oh, my God. Yeah. And the thing is that I talked to Anik. Uh, Anik uh, uh, is uh, the, the head programmer of Fantastic Fest. And she wrote me an email and she asked, so, hey, I saw uh, the trailer of your film online. And uh, it sounds interesting. Can you can you send it to me? And I said like, yeah, sure. I am a good nerd. I already, of course, submitted the film to Fantastic Fest, but uh, <laughs> so it's somewhere in your database. But of course, here it is. And and uh, she watched it. And two weeks later, she wrote back, yeah, I, I really like the film, but I'm not sure that I don't know. And. And then she pretty much declined and said, "Like I, I, I'm not sure that we can show this. So I'm, I'm. So thank you so much. I really enjoyed it, but no, yeah. And then, like you know, like three days later, she writes me another email. I can't get the movie out of my head. I can't get it out of my head. I want to show it. I want to show it. What's the premiere status? And I said, like, well, it didn't change in three days, so it's still world premiere because Fantastic Fest is early in the in the season, end of <clears> September." <throat> And I just like I almost dropped dead. I thought like, oh my god, <laughs> I, it's happening. And then I flew to Texas, which is like also in times of COVID, also kind of like the biggest adventure and everything. So, but now it's all normalizing a little bit. But oh my god, yeah. But uh, but so you saw it. It's very fresh, and it's yeah. yeah well, it's about a guy who goes insane. <laughs> I mean, that's what it is. Well, yeah, basically. But you don't know that. No, yeah, you know I mean, don't. like, when once did you know anything about the film beforehand? Uh, did you read anything, or no. did you just like go no, into it? I, and watch I, it? I always avoid trailers and uh -huh. and blurb. I, I want that because so years ago, yeah, obviously, years ago, gosh, I can't even remember when they came out. I feel like 99, 2000. I went to see like the Gladiator and the Matrix, mm -hmm. um, and I knew nothing about either film. Mm -hmm. Right, a friend just called me up one day and it's like, Oh, do you want to go to cinema? I'm like, Yeah, all right. He's like, Oh, there's this something called the Matrix. And I was like, eh, I don't know, but fine, let's go. I want to get out of the house. And then just being blown away because I didn't know what to expect. Yeah, right, yeah. and the same with Gladiator, I'd heard it was, you know, ancient Rome and blah, 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 but that was it. Mm -hmm. And those films just blew me away. And it's always trying to get that experience back you know what i mean because it's just like i feel trailers give way too much away oh yeah absolutely oh yeah, you know, yeah. David, i hate trailers that are like where sometimes you don't even have to watch the movie anymore because there's like oh. the whole film there like in two and a half minute trailer like why would why <laughs> well yeah or or you know it will miss a genre of film Right, so mm -hmm. it will make a film look like it's a comedy, but it's not. <laughs> yeah, I mean? it it will take the best parts of the film, 
so that's it. <laughs> like you're yeah, thinking, yeah. oh well, that if if it was if it's as good as that trailer, and you'd be like, oh no, all the good parts uh, were in that no. trailer. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's interesting. I mean, there's this this whole uh, thing. It's called Save the Cat. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, but Save the Cat is uh, this book a guy named Snyder wrote like in the 1990s or something like that. And it's pretty much this, uh, it's, it's kind of like a how-to book to write uh, uh, screenplays. Uh, it's almost like this structure, like how, mm -hmm. how does the first act, second act work, third act. And if you take this and, uh, and, 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 and you apply it to films, you can almost see, ah, that's, now they are changing from act one to two, and now they're yes. doing this. It's almost like a formula. Like most of the time, it's also very boring because you kind of already know, ah, oh, yeah, that's it. This is the dark night. Mm. The dark night is happening. So it's like third act is starting, and this and this. Yeah. So you have this like basic structure. And 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 the Snyder guy uh, who wrote that book, um, he he also says that most trailers are made up out of like one specific segment of the the three act structure of a film and that's the so-called fun part the fun part is when you know like indiana jones is fighting the nazis or something like that and, mm. and there's lots of explosions and things happening and and or or when you actually explore the new world that the protagonist has been thrown into and that's where all the fun part starts and that's also super good trailer material because that is something that people that's actually what most people want to see uh, yeah. Getting immersed into a new world, or 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 the crazy thing about the Matrix with all the the machines and the pods and all that stuff, and yeah, but it's it's just like one part of this like whole three act structure of a film uh, that is completely different than all other structures, uh, all, all other parts in the film, uh, and that also like as you say, it sometimes it just like gives a completely different impression of a film that is not true. Yeah, or or it ruins a film. Yeah. I remember I, I saw Us. Have you seen Us? The, oh, yes, uh, I have. Yeah, the Jordan Peele one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, which I thought was great. I thought yeah. it was great, and it was different. I didn't know what to expect. But then, you know, to, to put, to do this podcast, right? So then I put all the information in the episode details. So mm -hmm. there's the trailer and all of this. So in finding the trailer... I saw, because I thought, oh, let me just see what the trailer is. And so mm -hmm. I watch the trailer and I'm like, they get, you know, the pit when she looks in the mirror? Uh -huh. That oh, was yes, in the yeah. trailer. And I'm like, you can't have that in the trailer. Because this is just like that, the major spoiler. Yeah, it leads you in a complete, it leads you in the direction of what's going to happen. Yeah. And I was just like, I was blown away how dumb you mean that, yeah. that happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, for my for my last film, it's a it's a documentary about uh, about political terms. So it's like it's almost like a Sesame Street. It's like a ninety minute Sesame Street episode <laughs> where I'm trying to explain. So because there's so much debating online, and people talk a lot about you know like I'm anti capitalist and I'm this and right. I resistance and blah blah blah. And people just like don't even know what that means. And when I ask people, so please explain me what you mean with that you're anti capitalist. And then they say like I don't like money. I was like, no, this is this is not. And no, no, <laughs> this is a yeah. little bit more complex. So I had this idea of like making a film that that explains the most interesting terms from the political landscape or political debate in like almost like five to ten minute segments. Uh, and I did that in 2018. It's called Glossary of Broken Dreams. Okay. And uh, and and I had to do because, of course, the film festivals wanted it and all this stuff. So I had to do a trailer for that. And I knew exactly I don't like trailers. So the whole film is as, as the whole trailer is is a friend of mine who has this like deep black voice and he's a great, great actor from Florida. And he has this like super crazy uh, uh, trailer voice. And so, and he's just like, Johannes Grensford made this new film, but he hates trailers. But it has this like super uh, unnerving trailer soundtrack. And like that, it's like, dum, 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 dum. but it's pretty much like a trailer complaining about trailers. And then I took the entire film and sped it up to 10 seconds. And that's the trailer. So, so Johannes doesn't like trailers. So he took the whole film and sped it up to 10 seconds. Here it is. Enjoy. <laughs> because yeah, like, my God, I could, I could, I could I complain about trailers like my whole life, I guess. But, but yeah. A anyhow, so like now that it's fresh, so what, what, what is your first impression of my, my protagonist's ordeal or actually the other people's ordeal? <laughs> I, I mean, it's like 
where did this idea come from? Right, okay. I, mean, I think that's one of the big things. Mm -hmm. Like, and also, well, yeah, it's like there's two ideas, you know, because you have the whole tinnitus, and then what that spawns. So, it's oh just yeah, like, uh -huh. where did yeah, where did this concept okay. come from? Well, I I knew that was pretty much the basic idea of the film. I knew that I would like to do a film about a guy who pretty much like goes crazy, or a guy that is like a, a very I mean, my protagonist is never kind of like a sympathetic character or something. So he's like, even from the beginning, at least for me, when I wrote it with Samantha, uh, for me, the, the guy is like, I mean, you you feel pity for him because he has a tinnitus and, right. and, and he's trying to cure it. So it's pretty much like the story of a guy who has tinnitus and uh, and who locks himself up in, in, in his kind of like little DIY room or in his little laboratory. It's a little kind of like womb of of uh, of uh, I'm going to fix myself uh, yeah. because I have a tinnitus and it 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 drives me crazy. I want to know what it is, and he finds out this tinnitus has some specific qualities, and so he's he's doing experiments and trying to find out why. And so the idea came. There were two ideas. Idea number one was I knew that I would want to make a film that is only in one room. And actually, it's even like like seventy percent of the film is even one on the desk. So it's like in one room, but most of it is on a desk. And I knew from the aesthetic, I wanted to do something that is super claustrophobic, something that is like really showing. It's it's a story of a guy who goes crazy, but you should also see individuals that it, it should be different. There should be something. There should be a different quality to that. And my idea was because what I wanted to show is how how the kind of the world of the protagonist is kind of like because usually nerds and nerdy people the positive side of nerdiness is that that people are kind of like open they're open minded they're interested in things and even if it's some i don't know it's stuff like you know like being interested in marvel characters or something like that or i don't know like uh, birds eggs or whatever it is like people have an obsession with something uh, when when you're a nerd and i'm a very nerdy person i completely see that I, I know I collect stuff and 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 do so but if it's positive it's it's almost it's always open you're like you open yourself up to the world and then, then you try to find things that match your obsession or that that you find out things about about the world that that you're interested in and in yeah, my case want I wanted to spread the knowledge and share it and share, but also being active and open-minded and, and looking around and going to internet sites and doing this and seeing things on the street that, that fit your specific kind of like nerdy interest or hobby or something and then and bring that into your world. And in my film, I thought it might, it should be the exact opposite. It should be like this guy is almost like sinking into his desk. It's just like his, his world is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And, uh, and the idea, uh, to do that was uh, that, and that also made complete sense with with the story and and what he wants to accomplish is uh, that I had this idea of like shooting most of the film with macro lenses, so like enlargement lenses. So he's he's doing experiments on things and he looks at stuff, you know, like pizza or or pencils or whatever stuff he's looking at it's all super enlarged it's like mm. this 65 millimeter lens that is making everything almost like a loop and uh so most of the time you see stuff super enlarged and that for me also fit the idea of like this horror or sp spooky film horror film situation that if you look at stuff enlarged it's always somehow creepy you know like if you look at, at pieces of oil on a pizza or something and you see that so big it's like a different world it's like a different universe and i thought like that might be something that would fit that idea very well so it's a it's a film about a guy on his desk doing experiments on strange things and horrible things and 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 he's looking at all of it on with 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 macro lenses and uh yeah so that was pretty much like how the aesthetic came from uh and and the idea was that uh i am and of, of course that is that is uh, and it's being debated right now uh, uh a lot I, I read a lot of H.P. Lovecraft when I was a kid, like, you know, like 13, 14 years old. Yeah. yeah so there's yeah. definitely a Lovecraftian element to the film, although mm. uh, without spoiling anything, you never really 
know if the guy is just crazy or he if he really hears the transdimensional old beings or something like that. You never know that, yeah. Uh, and so I, I wanted to do something that is kind of like Lovecraftian or or tapping into this like cosmic horror genre. Uh, without having to deal with all this like you know like you know that like that all the racist bullshit that 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 H. Lovecraft uh, wrote and all that stuff. So there's uh, there's there's an element to it uh, in that way that uh, so it is definitely inspired to some uh, to some degree by love Lovecraft's Lovecraftian elements, let's call it. But at the same time also this like I find it very interesting that that Lovecraft uh, was also a strange character because he was also a very nerdy character. He also like also always sh shut him shut himself away from the world. Was always like in his in his rooms and 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 reading weird stuff and only communicating with people through letters. I think he was also very sociopathic in a certain way. And uh, uh, and I think that in a certain way, Lovecraft was also a very negative nerd, so to speak. So my my character in the film and Lovecraft. Are kind of like from the same kind of like uh, carved out of the same woods of like negative nerddom in a certain way, mm. or, or that you were that you were, that you that that you're not open to the world anymore, and and or you have so many traumas, or you have so many phobias, or you have like racist tendencies, but you but you let yourself fall into that and not and not actively battle it, and uh, and in a certain way, so also Lovecraft and his story that he is like a. Uh, that Lovecraft was a victim, but also a perpetrator, is the same thing with the, the main character in my film. He's also a victim of, of Tinnitus. But but what he then does uh, to other people and himself and, and all kinds of living beings uh, is, of course, not okay. I mean, <laughs> it's not, you, you, you don't do that. And uh, so that ambivalence of, like, uh, of, of, of trying to do something good or trying to help someone, even yourself, and how that can completely derail uh, that 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 path completely derails this. I guess I, that's what I wanted to say. I guess or try to mm. put put on screen. No, I I think the spiral is handled very well, right? Because as you said at the beginning, we you know we get the guy and he's setting up the the, the room. And everything like that. And then he's, you know, talking, oh, so I got tinnitus and I'm trying to work out dif dif different sounds and things like that. And then it's like, oh, because the met, you know, my doctor doesn't really want to listen. And you'll be like, yeah, well, I understand. Like, I think everyone's got an experience of that, right? Going mm -hmm. to the GP yeah. and being like, oh, this is a bit. And they're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> and my white coat and diploma tell me that you actually feel this. And you're like, no. No, 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 no. So you emphasize with him at the start. And as it's going on, you slowly, you know what I mean? You see him doing more and more kind of deranged, just off-key yeah. things, which don't always start off as deranged and off-key, right? It starts off as plausible, but it's then goes further bit. and further and further. And I thought you handled that very well. But when you know devising this right mm -hmm. what was the how did you kind of think of the time frame because you know you've got a 90 minute film yeah and you're trying to get all of this information across but you don't want to rush it oh yeah, right? absolutely yeah, you yeah. don't want to go too slowly so how did you think right let me do it like let me pace it like this i i, yeah. I have a thing happen at this point and yeah, I what what I wanted to do is, of course, because the guy you have to be interested in that person. You want mm. to, and, and and that is also, of course, a spoiler. Is man, you never really see the character. Well, you only yes, see parts I, I of, of him. That, yeah. That's the that's the big thing, right? As well, is is you have all of this, right? You have your pacing and all of that, but then we don't see him. Right, yes, yeah, you see jaw or just or hands or ear and you know just things like yeah. that. And I, I thought I you kind of can patch him together uh, a yeah. little bit, like in your mind, but you never really see, fully see see the person. Yeah, yeah. So he 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 remains being a mystery to a certain degree. Mm. Uh, and uh, and yeah, yeah. So the thing was that I I wanted that. Uh, so I never wrote the character from the beginning as as. As a very positive, I mean, of course, he's suffering and all that stuff. So, and he's uh, 
he's 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 complaining a lot of course about the doctors and everything but in the beginning at least he has this like um there's this impetus of um of like trying to get something done and that he never leaves that so he's yeah. always trying to get something done he, he and he gets a lot of stuff done till the end of the film yeah mm -hmm. but at some point like as you say in this like small little increments all the stuff that he's doing is getting worse and worse and worse and but he always has an explanation for it so i wanted to create a character that is obviously and you realize that after like 20 minutes or maybe 25 minutes that the guy is not not just like there's something weird about him yeah and but but i wanted that only in the very end of the film that that so what, what i didn't want to to have is so he, he's he's a very systematic and scientific mind and i wanted him to go insane but at the same time never get hysterical or anything like that he's just like he's keeping his pace of course the pace gets faster in the end but also not that fast uh but so he's never never screaming around or anything or running around sometimes he has this like moments when he's really angry or something but 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 he kind of like keeps his thing he he does his thing until the very end and of course it's yeah. getting more and more horrible but but i never wanted uh, him to be like the super crazy you know like a uh, mad scientist i mean he is definitely a mad scientist in, in in his way but i never wanted him to completely to completely run around and you know like laugh maniacally or something like that yeah yeah he doesn't become a caricature no 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 archetype. yeah yeah no no i wanted I, yeah. Kind of yeah yeah so so and what i wanted to do is like in the beginning and I think that is also it's it, it was also interesting to see because I I submitted the film of course to many genre film festivals and horror film festivals, but also to to art house film festivals. For example, here in in Wilmington, uh, it's this like indie art house film festival, and I just came from Spain from uh, Terra Molins, and they are a super classic. Uh, horror film festival, and it's interesting to see the reaction and what people ask me if genre people watch the film and if people from the indie world or art house film world watch the film because pretty much they're watching the same film but but also not you know because mm. horror film fans have a different expectation how a, how a movie should look like and art house people have a different expectation of what the narration should look like of a film and, and all that stuff and so it's interesting to confront people with my film who is like strangely in the middle because it is definitely a genre film but it's also a very experimental art house film because i mean if you do a film that is like 70 or 80 percent shot with uh, macro lenses uh, it is not your everyday film of course no and uh, so so it was it uh, so it's interesting to to observe people's reaction to to the film but but uh, my my plan is because you ask uh, like how the pacing uh, how I was planning the pacing of the film is I wanted to kind of like bring the people down to the speed or, or the thought process level of the protagonist. So in the beginning, people, and that's why I think some people uh, are kind of like astounded, at least in the first half of the film, that nothing really terrifying or horrifying is happening. I mean, especially horror film fans. They're like, I, I, I see the faces when they watch the film and they're asking, why is there no like 20 year old girl being already like cutting in half or something like that? Why is there, why, why is it so psychological? Why is he talking about science and bacteria and all that stuff? And it's like, yeah, that's, that's, you have to kind of like let yourself into the world of the protagonist. You have to kind of like slow down to the level of his thinking and his, uh, look at the world in a certain way at the very moment and that's roughly for me i thought after probably half an hour or something like that or 35 minutes when you are when you're kind of like on his level and in his world then you can kind of like speed the whole thing up and then that's when like at around like for the 45 minute mark like he really starts with things that that uh people find like oh my god what's going on now now he's starting he's starting to kill animals and stuff like that you know that's when people are like oh my god <laughs> oh now i know where this is going but but for this like now i know where this is going you kind of need to to you kind of kind of like, i guess uh, my feeling was you have to slow down a little bit to to then fully yeah. be able to enjoy the 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 roller coaster <laughs> and and i think 
for it to feel realistic, mm-hmm. right? Because when people look at, you know, there's so many examples, you know, like uh, Charles Manson or the, um, oh gosh, the guy that was living in the cabin in the woods. Oh yeah, yeah. Manifesto. There's, there, there's always- oh, the, un- the Unabomber. The yeah, Unabomber. that's it, the Unabomber. The Unabomber. Yes. the Unabomber, I think, it's interesting, it's the first time in an interview the Unabomber comes up, but it's of course completely true. The Unabomber is a very good example of like a real world character of someone who is like, I mean, the guy was a professor. Mm. He had like degrees and everything, but, but something in his ideology just like snapped, you know, like just yeah. some like just like okay, I'm just living in the woods now. And <laughs> although and, there uh, is yeah. clarity to what some of the stuff he says, right? Yeah. Some of the stuff he says, you're like, I yeah. understand. He has a basic went critique, too far, of the, but I yeah. understand. Yeah. 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 <laughs> And that's that's the same thing I wanted to do with my film because most of the stuff my my protagonist. Uh, and I'm I'm, on, I'm also only saying protagonist for all the people who don't have seen the film yet, uh, because I never gave the guy a name. He is just the protagonist. He never even once says his name or anyone says his name. He's just like mm. the guy, you know, the protagonist. And and so I because he is many of the things that he says in the film, I completely agree with them. I'm an atheist, and most of the stuff he says about religion, I think, is true. And most about the stuff that he says about, you know, like bacteria and evolution and all that stuff, I think most of that stuff is is true. And it's uh, it's and I put it in there because it's stuff that I'm interested in anyway. So, so most of the obsessions he has in the film are also my own obsessions. So that was easy to write then as a script because I knew all this like little like tidbits of information and, and cool things that I put into the film. But, but yes, I mean, if you read it on paper and like, Oh yeah, he's right about that. And he's right about this and this and this and this. But in the end, it's always the consequence. What do you, there's this quote by Michel Foucault, who is a French philosopher. And he says, it's not important what you want to know, but why you want to know it. Uh, And that's for most people, the big difference. I mean, like like why <laughs> and and the very moment that that uh that you might that the protagonist might be true about the things but the consequences he he or or or, or the path he thinks that he has to choose based on that knowledge of course are horrible and wrong and you don't do that mm, <laughs> no. yeah yeah the, the quote really did work right because you, you had the clarity in the hysteria, right? Mm-hmm. And, and I thought he's, because he's going on this spiral, but obviously, he, you know, he's a scientist. So he still has that fundamental understanding. He still has that, you know, grounding in that. So yeah. it, w- it wouldn't be, you know, a full on just crazy, crazy, right? So it all made sense. And you're seeing this, situation unfold and you're like yo where is he how far is he gonna go that, oh that's yeah yeah exactly exactly yeah because people people always ask me especially if going to film festivals now uh, to ask me to say a couple of words before the film and i, I don't want to tell anything because it's all I've, all i could say are spoilers you know mm. and then and then i have this like standard phrase now i say my film is like you watch one of those uh, youtube videos uh, where, where a car is trying to brake on an icy road and, and, and you watch the car trying to brake and it slowly moves somewhere and you're like, oh my God, I can't watch it. I can't watch it. I can't watch it. I don't know how bad this is. is this, this is it's going, going to end bad, but I don't know how bad it is going to be in the end. And that is pretty much my film. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I, hope, I hope at least that it has this like hypnotic thing where you're like, you just like look and, and just like, oh my God. Well, it, like towards the end, <laughs> you are looking at it and I'm just like, oh no. And you want to look away, but you're just like, but where's this going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and there is, I mean, I, I think that that's what I said before. I think there is something fascinating about, about macro photography. There's something strange of, you know, like even looking at the uh, like drop, uh, blood, blood dripping in in a macro way looks so much like more strange it's it's almost like this like 
new landscape that you that you're walking in but it's also small and so and and i hope there is there is this uh i'm, I'm very happy by the way i i had a really great camera guy a good good uh, good friend of mine now a good friend but when we started working on the film florian hofer is his name uh i only knew him for half a year and and the, the funny backstory is that there is a really cool film festival in vienna and it's uh, of all uh, it's it's a porn film festival really, and it's uh, it's it's called it's it's called the Porn Film Festival Vienna. But they are super political and super great. So they they show a lot of trans porn and feminist porn, and and they have talks about intimacy. So it's 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 not your like everyday boring you know like porno you would see but it's also very experimental stuff they also have like political porn shorts and it's it, there, there's a lot of really interesting stuff going on in this like independent porno erotic scene and so i went to that festival and uh if, I, I met a friend of mine there who is a director and he won that was in 2019 and he won an award for the best in austrian uh, for the best austrian porn uh, short film and uh, and he introduced me to his cameraman and said like this is flow i did this like crazy little porn film with him which is by the way also a super great idea so he filmed two people having sex but they uh, like um, the woman was painted with blue color and the man was painted in red color and it's a one shot from the top and they were having sex on a big canvas right. so they were having sex and pretty much like at the same time painting and in the end, he had this like giant blue and red painting, and it was called the uh, action painter porn. And I thought like, oh, it's a fun idea. And uh, and they had a lot of problems with that because uh, we, how where do we put the camera and all that stuff, and what kind of lenses do we use for that? And and it's a one shot, and we don't we can't do that like five times. It has to be perfect the first time. Mm. And so they were dealing a lot with like things. And so, and uh, uh, and and David, uh, the, the director of that film, introduced me at the Porn Film Festival to Florian, who is now my camera guy, and said, like, if you need a really crazy, nerdy, super obsessive person behind the camera for one of your films, please work with Florian. Florian is the best person to do that. <laughs> and then I started talking to him and told him, hey, I want to make a film that's only shot with macro lenses in one room. And it's like a 90 minute feature horror film. And he says like, oh, that sounds interesting. We should talk. <laughs> we should talk more about that. And, and then we, we spent uh, a couple of months in this room in my apartment because it's in my apartment. Uh, so I didn't have a lot of funding money for the film. So I, I, I wanted to make it uh, most uh, uh, created in the most efficient way and, uh, and not, not having to spend too much money. So I kind of like redecorated one room in my apartment in Vienna into this little like... Uh, laboratory of hell <laughs> that the whole film is set in but that was also fun because uh, whenever Florian had a couple of hours uh, time of working with me he came by to my house we shot a couple of scenes and then uh, like you know like three days later he came by for another two hours and a couple of days later for another couple of hours so over a course of like three or four months we shot all 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 the the, the the main the main footage and that was a super easy and and, and chilled out way to do that film ah cool like do you storyboard it like how yeah how was this kind of plotted out so you knew you know what am i shooting today and so the the script was super detailed so the script was um very much like I, I filled around with each sentence. So the thing is the collaboration with Samantha was that Samantha, and strangely, I only ever met her online. Samantha Leinhardt is a, a horror writer from Pennsylvania and I never met her in person. So I found her online, I sent her an email and then we pretty much like worked in a Google doc together on, on writing the thing. And I had pretty much like the basic outline already. And I was working with Samantha because she's also a super, uh, 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 interesting Lovecraft nerd, and I thought like I need someone with uh, uh, with also like this like uh, Lovecraft lens on the whole thing. So I like I kind of like plotted out the whole thing. Then I I gave it to Samantha. She made some comments on that, and then we kind of like worked over it a couple of times together. And uh, in in the end, we had the script, and uh, and then I was looking at all the material that I have because. 
you kind of, I, I, I wanted to avoid that, that whenever he says something, you see the thing. So whenever he talks about toothpaste, you see toothpaste. Whenever he talks about this, he does this. So I wanted to avoid that it's too descriptive, that whatever he talks matches the, the visual. So, of course, sometimes it, it has to be like that because if he's, he's talking about, about ants, of course you see ants and stuff like that. But I, I, I wanted to, 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 um, to, to kind of like play around with that. And most of that stuff couldn't be storyboarded because we never really knew what the ants would do or what yeah. uh, so we 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 kind of like shot a certain amount of coverage and then we like and and then most of the film kind of like developed through the editing process so That's i would right. say like 50% is happened in editing and 50% was already kind of like very predetermined. I didn't really do storyboarding or anything like that, but there were like 10 or 15 key images in the film. Mm. Uh, and I knew that I need them and I knew where they are. And those like 15 shots or 15 setups, uh, I was super precise about them. So I kind of knew from the very beginning how they would look like and they have to, and that, that, that they would have to fit. Uh, but other than that, between that, we were fiddling around in the in the editing a lot, and that was a good thing because I had a lot of time in editing because of COVID. So ma many people ask me, it looks like a classic COVID film, you know, it's like one guy in one room. And I said, like, no, 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 no. We shot, we wrote the film, and we shot the film before COVID. So we shot the whole thing in November, December, January, uh, 2019, and January 2020. So before the film was already shot before COVID started, but I had a lot of time during COVID sitting at home and obsessing about the editing and all the cuts and all the, the, the collage aesthetic of the film, I think came out of having a lot of time in my apartment <laughs> in, in, in 2020 and 2021. So were, were there a few different cuts or different images while he's talking and going over things and you'd run mm -hmm. those past people to see if they worked? So in the beginning, it was... Because in the very beginning, we thought we only want the the desk and the macro shots, maybe one establishing shot of the room, but most of it should be on the desk. But then we, we learned in in the process of filming the whole thing that we need something in between. So it's, it's not enough that you just like see the fingers of the guy. You kind of like need some parts, as you said before, parts of his jaw or something. You, you need a little bit more. You have to step back from the desk every now and then, and then step back onto the desk. Mm. So, and that, uh, that we already kind of realized that has to happen when we shot the whole thing, because the, the, the macro shots are so, obscure or abstract sometimes that you as like we knew exactly what we were showing when we were filming that or we, we knew what what that is but people don't know how oil looks like if it's super enlarged or something like that so so you you have to show the bottle of oil before you show the enlarged oil so you have to always jump a little bit back and show what's going on kind of like in the real world or in in in, in, in the room so so and that of course changed the, the aesthetic a, a little bit in the end that we said we need to see the guy smoke a cigarette or something like that every now and then or we 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 need to see him pacing around in the room or something but so that that happened while shooting the whole thing yes uh, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah. So that 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 changed my my original idea a little bit, but also not that much because this the film is still very much on the desk. Yeah. And with those shots of our protagonist, mm -hmm. right? Because it's, it, it's me, by the way. I'm not ah, sure if okay. it's, it, it's me. It's me because I'm cheap, you know. <laughs> <laughs> No, it, it's strange that the, the character is split. It's it's almost like it's a, it's a little bit schizophrenic because the body of the character is me, and the voice of the character is an an actor that we casted in uh, in uh, in LA. Uh, so so uh, Julianne Gabert, uh, who is one of my co-producers, uh, and she was a recommendation of a friend of mine who lives in LA 
uh, when I asked him, so I need a really good nerdy voice that is not annoying, you know, because you have, you're pretty much like listening to a monologue for 90 minutes. And if that sound, if that sounds like too hysterical or too high pitched, because nerdy voices usually are like, there's something <laughs> annoying about them. So, so, yeah. so I wanted kind of like a nerdy voice, but that has some kind of like also some deep, some gravitas to it, some, some, some deepness, you know, and and I knew like I probably have to do with like a casting call for that. So my friend Michael introduced me to Julian, who started being my casting agent. And then uh, it was so good working with her that she she leveled up to being uh, uh, the co-producer of the film, and she did all the stuff that needed to be done in LA on the LA side. And yeah, and then uh, and then we we recorded uh, this. Uh, I listened to two hundred or so two hundred voices. And Whoa. it was uh, uh, after uh, I, I thought I go insane listening to more voices. <laughs> it was horrible. <laughs> so now you have tinnitus. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, I had, I had interestingly, I had tinnitus uh, for five uh, uh, minutes when I was like twenty-five or something like that. Oh. So that is also like, I mean, it, I, I didn't, I didn't really do the film because I had this like five minutes of tinnitus when I was twenty-five. But it was something that I could relate to because I thought when I had it. Even in those five minutes, if this keeps going like this, I'm going insane. I, I cannot imagine how how that will be if I would have that for the rest of my life. So, but but that that is true. But I, I needed something that people can't see and can't relate to because it's only in the head of the protagonist. So I, I needed something that drives him crazy, uh, but that other people cannot fathom in a certain way yeah. they because it's only in his head and i thought like ah tinnitus is probably a really good thing and it also makes a good make makes good uh, uh, uh soundscapes for the for the sound editing and all that stuff so i thought like that that's how that whole tinnitus thing came to be but yes but i i i listened to 200 uh, uh nerdy voices and it was pretty clear from from even like listening to the first time to all those 200 voices that i thought like oh Ethan Haslam, that's the name of the of the of the voice uh, of the voice actor. I thought like ah, he's he's just he's great. He's great. So I I kind of I fell in love with him, uh, pretty much like uh, first time listening to him. And then I had like of course like three or four other uh, like candidates, but it was pretty fast that I decided on on his voice. So he is speaking, and I am I am acting, uh, and yeah, and that was really really cheap because I mean. Uh, Usually, like why film production is so expensive is because you have to have such a massive crew. You usually mm. have your you're shooting for six or seven weeks, and then you have like fifty or sixty people on set and all that stuff. That makes uh, filmmaking expensive. So many people ask me, "Hey, you're a filmmaker. Why are why do films cost like a million euros or two? It's like, well, it, if you just sum up all the people who have to work on a, on a film, it's just like it's just like regular." wages for people you know and then it just like sums up and in my case i could do that very cheap because most of the time it was me and florian my camera guy in the room and i was directing but at the same time it was also the body of the protagonist so uh it was a very intimate way of working with him because i learned to know him very well <laughs> my camera guy <laughs> yeah yeah uh... No, that, that, that's definitely fascinating. And like, did you do a full shoot and just cut out like the rest of the face, or did you just angle the camera we, in certain ways? We, yes, we did that. We, we we tried to never really. There's like, I think there's one one shot, but I'm also blurry. Where you see my face from the front, but also very small on the screen, and it's blurry in the background. Yeah. But but we 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 decided from the very beginning that. That we 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 that we we have to, it's of course a strange restriction like oh we have to show someone doing things but you can never see the person's face so you always have strange camera angles from the back or from the side or for this and that and uh, yeah but in the end it was also good for editing because because the the, the continuity. Of course, works completely different in a film like mine than in a film where you really see a lot of faces, because usually what 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 people are super keen on when they watch films is like that. That's why editing uh, 
uh, or, or shooting a lot of footage is 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 so key for many for many directors is because in the editing all that stuff has to just like come together and it has to look smooth it has to have the 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 illusion of all these different things are happening as a continuum but they are not i mean in most films they are not even shot chronologically you know like there's just like they shoot one film and one one perspective here and one perspective there and in the end you have to stitch them together and people have to have the fantasy of all of it is really happening in one room and in one thing and you have you have to you have to be careful about that in a in a regular film in our film we always had the the macro world that we could flee into if something is not working in editing so we could always like switch back and forth between the enlargement and and the parts of the faces and stuff like that so we could be very creative uh and also do things that you usually don't do in editing so that was very that was very fun actually to play around and once you'd finished like when did you know you that was it right you you done all your You'd gone over, you'd done cuts and things like mm. that. But, you know, you no, must I, have wondered, <laughs> is never, this working? Never. Uh, oh, if it's working. So there, there was the point, and that's always good for filmmakers to have deadlines, because I knew I, I, I have to finish the whole thing by mid of July 2021, because I wanted to submit it to film festivals for the, for the autumn season that we are right now in. So I had the deadline of like i think the 10th of july or something like that so by the 10th of july whatever was done was done <laughs> uh, and uh, of course if i watch the film right now in with with audiences uh every now and then i say like ah i could have like cut out like four frames here or three frames here and this and i could have done that better but in the end i'm i'm, I'm very happy with it so it's it's not that i have the feeling when i'm watching the film oh my god i i feel so ashamed for this but but it was <clears throat> but I, I, I uh, as mentioned before, when I submitted the film, I really did not know if anyone, I knew, it, it, it was a strange feeling because I knew that I really liked the film and it came out the way that I wanted it. But that's also, a, there's always a difference between that I, I finished something that, that, that worked for me, but I didn't know if anyone else would like it. So you 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 make the film and it's also very experimental and also you're sending it to as mentioned before to to horror film fans who can be very harsh you know like all the if you go on IMDb and on Letterbox and stuff like that uh, the even the super good horror films of 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 movie history even the super good horror films don't have the best ratings on IMDb and Letterbox because I I, I think that horror film fans are very picky. <laughs> it's like if you compare it to to the classic like the the classic science fiction films of movie history they always have better ratings in online ratings than horror films and it's it seems that horror fans are very dedicated and very you know like it had like because horror is very progressive i think in the way that how you can show things but at the same time horror films can also be very conservative because they are pretty much like telling the same story over and over again yeah, and so and 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 some people. Uh, I thought like, I, I really did not know if people would like it. I thought like the horror film fans would hate it, and the, and the art house film people would hate it as well. So when when the the first uh, acceptance letters came in from film festivals, I thought like, oh my god, I'm just what I'm. It seems to work. I can't believe it, but yes. And uh, so that that was like a very, it, it, it was a relief because I mean, I knew from the beginning I, I would do something that is experimental and that is strange and crazy. And 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 I I, I, mean, I did it to myself. I could have done another film, of course. Yeah. But I, I, I wanted to do it. I had this like vision. And and when, when finally the first reviews came in and they were all just like... Uh, this is like the best horror film of the year. I think like, I can't believe that. I'm not sure this is true, but dear reviewer, if you say this, I will take this. <laughs> I'm very happy about it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. and, and what was it like being in that first public screening? Oh, that, that was, at, was at Fantastic Fest in, in, in Austin. So, I mean, first of all, going to Texas, 
uh, uh, what was great and and uh, going to Fantastic Fest and Fantastic Fest usually is a big party. There's there's a lot of people come. So in this year, of course, uh, not that many people could come because most international guests couldn't come because uh, because of COVID. And I I got this special. Uh, travel exempt from the U.S. government to be able to go there. So I was one of the few uh, European uh, people there, and uh, and but sitting there in the audience, and I was super nervous. I was super nervous. I was uh, I I was sitting there, and usually uh, my films before that, and also most of the art projects, because I mean I only started doing documentaries and feature films pretty much like 10, 11 years ago. So this is almost like the second part of my career because I most of the stuff I do is in the realm of like theater and, and art and uh, it, it, computer games and performance art and all kinds of stuff. So I, I founded this art collective called Monochrome uh, uh, like in the 1990s. And most of the work I do is part of this art collective. So also many people in, in this film uh, that I collaborated with are members of my art group and and people that i know through the art world uh and uh so so it was i didn't, I didn't even know where, where i wanted to go with that uh, but okay but but anyhow it was it was uh uh interesting to to be there in the room and not knowing if people will like it and oh yeah that that's what i wanted to say is that that most of the stuff most of my art up until now is usually in a way humorous. I mean, there is dark humor in my film as well, but most of the time the documentary was talking about, about, uh, about the political terms and all that stuff. All of that stuff is working with humor and humor is, is, is a way of, for me, that I, that I know it, it's kind of, humor is a language that I speak because I, I do a lot, a lot of my, my projects are humorous. Yeah, and and it was the first time that I did something that is a straight-on drama horror film, and if you sit in the audience, and and you don't hear people laugh, that's usually how I know how people like something that I do is when you see when you hear the reaction of people laughing, and then I know okay they are laughing at the right moment, it seems and 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 many people laugh at the same time so it seems that the joke was working or or that people are into it or so and and with sitting in a room with a film like this where you have a couple of laughters every now and then but most of the time it's people just like staring in disbelief <laughs> or being terrified or being grossed out you don't hear that you know yeah. every now and then i i had that the first time in in the in, uh, from the audience that there was one moment when they said like <gasps> so i had this like <laughs> but most of the time I, I was sitting there and i did not know if people like it or hate it and only after the film was over and people were clapping and people were coming to me and giving me feedback i thought wow it really worked people liked it this is this is wow <laughs> and then i was then i was sighing in relief i have to say <laughs> <laughs> well i i I'm, i guess the you know the whole way it got into fantastic fest must have given you a level of confidence that the film it, it sits with people. Yeah, yeah. I right. mean, it, it, it's strange. It's almost like, like, uh, yeah. It's 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 a strange form of awards. I mean, I of course didn't win any awards at Fantastic Fest uh, because those awards are usually going to to bigger films and and like. I mean, I I, I was in the same Fantastic Fest where they first showed uh, Titan, uh, Titan, uh, the, uh. The, the French one. Yeah, and of course, I mean, that's a completely different uh, like level of like competing with films of course yeah uh, but but i mean just being there and uh being like on the same you're know, like in, in in the same booklet as as the the, the 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 new new film by edgar wright and stuff like that i mean it's like what the fuck yeah <laughs> i i like that yeah and of course i mean it was a strange form also of being kind of like an almost like an underdog film there because i mean i made my film for twenty thousand euros i mean this is just like a micro micro budget film you know it's yeah. small yeah and it's it's uh uh and 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 uh I'm I'm there with with people who have like millions and millions of euros of budget and and then and then people come to me and say like that's the best thing I've seen at Fantastic Fest, 
and I say like, oh wow, I, I, it, it's hard for me to deal with compliments. I have to say, I never know what to say, but uh, but of course I enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, so where do you go from now? For, no, no, where do you go now? <laughs> oh, so I mean the the, the, the film festival season is not over yet so there there's still a bunch of film festivals coming up and uh and I, I think a third of the film festivals i've submitted to haven't even replied yet or or decided yet so some of the deadlines are only you know like end of november early december so i don't know but but so far it's uh, it, it it's it, it's been it's been really good i mean i love I, I would love to go to more film festivals, but of course it's a little bit complicated with COVID and all that stuff. So I've been to Fantastic Fest and I've been to uh, to Terra Molins now in Spain and now I'm at Cacolorus in, 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 in the US. Uh, but uh, but it's just like, uh, it, it feels good to you know, like go on Twitter or Facebook every day and you know, like Google if someone mentioned my film or something like that. And uh, so that's, it's just, it's a, it's it, it's good that the whole thing is not only her happening virtually. So I, I I'm glad that I can be present in person at a couple of screenings of the film because I was a little bit terrified of that of that it would only get you know like a virtual release at the film yeah. festivals. Yeah. And uh, sp speaking about the next level, of course, that would be distribution. And the very moment I I was accepted at Fantastic Fest. I had a couple of sales agents uh, uh, contact me, so that I mean, like in a certain way, as you said before, the moment you you are in a film festival like Fantastic Fest, there is an attention, yes. and people want to know what what is it, what did you do, and uh, we haven't found a distribution uh, company yet. Uh, but even if that doesn't happen, I mean, I totally see that my film is strange. My film is a strange film, you know, and it is it is it is unconventional. And and even at the end of the day, if we don't find a theatrical release or something like that, or it will end up on some online platform, that's totally fine with me because the film was never made for like a, a like 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 a broad theatrical release. Uh, I mean, I, I it would. It, the, the film was something that I really wanted to do, and I didn't really think about how to commercially exploit the film. So it was a vision that I had and I wanted to do. And now, uh, strangely, people like it and and want to see it. But but I also like it, it, it could totally be true that that it's nothing for for like a a, a theatrical distribution. But at the same time. Uh, so many, so many really cool and interesting and, and important people have seen my film because those production companies uh, or distribution companies uh, and, and my sales agent is working with them and they all sent me really, really nice uh, emails. They say like, your, your film doesn't fit into our distribution model at the moment. It's, it's way too experimental, but you're a great filmmaker and it, it looks really great and you're very precise and effective in what you do. Uh, you're on our radar now. And even that is just like, un this is priceless. I, I yeah, never no, thought that this, yeah. That's promising. <laughs> yeah. And so even if this film will not get a, a wide, wider distribution, uh, it, it will definitely lead to something uh, in the future. And I'm very happy about that. And I never expected that to happen. And I'm very grateful. But <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not religious, but thank you, Lord in heaven. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's great to hear, man. That really yeah. is. Uh, so any thoughts on you know what you'll be working on next? Okay, so at the moment... Uh, that's also a film that I kind of like made at the same time or started last year. So it's also almost ready, uh, almost done. It will probably be done by the end of the year. It's, uh, it's a documentary I was working on. And uh, uh, I started working on it pretty much last, last March. It was I started working on it pretty much like in the same time when I edited this film here. And it's a documentary. Mm -hmm. And it's a documentary about let's say the positive aspects of nerd culture. Uh, so it, it, it is okay. like if if, okay. if, 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 horror, if if the horror film is kind of like the dark side of being a nerd, uh, it is 
it is about something positive. And it's a, it's pretty much a COVID story. I don't know how many people will want to watch a COVID story, but uh, it, it's also very, it's a very strange, uh, uh, not not strange, but it's a very complex story. It's a friend of mine is, uh, uh, is the founder of a little hackerspace, makerspace in a small town in uh, in the U.S. in Durango. It's one of these little cowboy towns, you know, like uh, uh, like it's it's a wild west town, and lots of people go there because of like wild westy and outdoorsy tourism. So it's a small thirty thousand people town in 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 Colorado in the Rocky Mountains, and it's called Durango. And and he he's a very nerdy character, and he founded this like hackerspace where people can learn how to solder, you know, and and learn programming, so do nerdy things there. And when the whole COVID thing started. Uh, there was a problem. There are only two big hospitals in the area, and one hospital is in Durango, and one hospital is in Farmington, which is an hour by car to the south over the border to New Mexico. And the the hospitals had real problems because they had so many COVID patients. And and I was asking him, hey, why, why are there problems with so many COVID patients? I mean, your town is 30,000 people, and Farmington is like... 50,000 people or something. So w w where are all the patients coming from? And he says, yeah, they are coming from the Navajo Nation because it's bordering the Navajo Nation. The Navajo Nation is like 350,000 people and it's the size of Ireland and they don't have a, a hospital and they have high rates of diabetes and, and, and of course, it's almost like the third world in the US. I mean, colonialism uh, was not kind to, yeah. to Native American people in the Navajo. And, and, and then I got interested in the story. And so what happened is that that little hackerspace was the first hackerspace or one of the first hackerspaces to make equipment for the hospitals because the hospitals ran out of equipment to treat people, you know, like face masks and mm. stuff like that. And they started this super great uh, uh, kind of like little hackerspace project of like creating pepper units that's the the stuff that you put on your on your face where the ventilation is blowing the air out so the uh, uh the, the glass is not like yeah. fogging up and stuff like that so they built all of that stuff in their hackerspace and made it for the hospitals and and i thought that's a just a great story because on the one hand it's about a little hackerspace and nerdy people who do cool stuff with do it do it yourself uh, uh, producing of things. At the same time, it's also a story of colonialism and a story of the U.S. Why is there something like Navajo Nation? Why are the people so poor there? Where? Why is there not enough like medical uh, personnel there and all that stuff? Uh, and also at the same time, it's a story about the U.S. and why the healthcare is so fucking shitty there. <laughs> what is going on? So it's it's almost like a third about the history of the U.S a third about the history of hacking and hackerspaces and making and the do-it-yourself movement, but it's also a history of, uh, of, of healthcare in the U S and, uh, and yeah, that's, that's the documentary I'm working on right now. And that's hopefully will be done by the end of the year, early next year. But of course I already have something in my mind now that I, I, in, in German, we say blutlecken. We, I, I, I was licking blood. It's a German saying, which means okay. I, I got, I got, I got into, I got it. If, if you, it, 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 German is strange, isn't it? Just, <laughs> you can say I've, I've got an idea, but no, I'm licking blood. <laughs> yes, yes. And licking blood, of course, means something when you're like, ah, gee, I, I really want this. You're like, I, 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 I I'm, 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 I'm licking. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I i was i was I, i'm licking blood to do another horror film or something <laughs> something creepy that, that would be nice and i have some i have some ideas but i cannot say anything yet i, I have to I have to be I... okay. <laughs> okay. Right. No my worries. lips are my lips are sealed which is also <laughs> which is a strange uh, uh english saying my lips are sealed yeah very yeah true true <laughs> yeah it's also like it's, 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 it's a horror thing it's like a it's a horror, horror trope of like that you can't talk anymore mm. and that kind of stuff you know anyhow <laughs> anyhow <laughs> all right well it would be great to have you back to talk about the documentary when that's done and Absolutely. then the next horror idea once that's done right 
Absolutely. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely uh, keep you updated. It was, it was a super, super fun, fun uh, uh, discussion and, and, and chat. Great yeah, that no, you're having I, I appreciate you dropping by. Sure. Especially absolutely. with the jet lag. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I will have a, a long, hot shower now. That's my plan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, fantastic. And I, I really, yeah, I, I hope you have a great success with this because it is so different. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think you, you, you never actually said, do you, did, you, did you like it? I was intrigued by it. Intrigued, right? That, like, at least that's I, good. That's good. That's good. Yeah, no, it's like I didn't hate it, mm -hmm. right? But it's like I still haven't because I've literally just watched it, so I'm still yeah, yeah, you have to process it. Yeah, yeah, everything. and it's it's so fun. It's so fun. Even like, uh, I mean, I I I got a lot of good little reviews and 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 uh, and and comments on Letterbox. I I really like Letterbox because on IMDb. Not so many people are commenting on IMDb. It, it was the big platform on, of, of commenting like in the last years, but now Letterbox is the, is the new thing where all the people at least write a, a sentence or two. And there are many great reviews of, of, of my film on Letterbox. And, and some of them are even bad reviews. I mean, there are people who give me like one star out of five or something like that. But the review pretty much says like, I couldn't stop watching it. Uh, it, but it was so horrible. It was so horrible. Who does that? This is just like, this is not, this is not, ah! but, but you see like, even like the people who hate it, it couldn't just couldn't stop watching it. Couldn't stop watching it or, yeah. or can't, or can't stop commenting on it or thinking of it. Like, but even, I mean, people have so much stuff to do nowadays, even like watching a film is a commitment of time, you know? Mm. It's a commitment of time. And then going to a website and writing an email, uh, like writing a review is also a commitment, you know? And that people even do that is just like enough to know like, well, people are in some way engaging with it. There are many people who like it. Some people, of course, hate the guts out of it, yes. But I mean, this is just, they have some kind of emotional reaction to it. And, and it's strange like that, that what, what I was guessing that most people would not like is the small pace, uh, the, the, short, uh, the, the, the slow pacing in the beginning of the film. And then people would say like, oh, it's so boring and nothing happens. And strangely, that never, almost never shows up even in bad reviews, that it's too slow or something like that. Yeah, and no, that is, I yeah, thought the yeah. pace was fine. Yeah. I thought the pace was, the, yeah, it, it's like some of the animal stuff where you go. Oh, I, oh, by the way, I really have, I only, I mean, I even put it into the, into the, uh, the, the end credit scene, but I only killed one ant for the film, only one ant. So that so so I really I like I, I didn't want this film production being like a slaughter fest of animals. Okay. <laughs> so for yeah. example, yeah, for example, there's this one scene, spoiler, where I put salt on a slug. And and mm. I I did that. There are lots of things in the film that I did because it's stuff that I witnessed when I was a kid. My grandmother was always salting slugs in the garden, and I always saw that as a kid, and I always found it so disgusting and horrible. And and I I, I always I, in general I found slugs disgusting, and now I like slugs. <laughs> I, I lived together with twenty slugs for two months, and now I can pick them up and pet them and everything. I don't have a problem with slugs anymore. I cured myself from slug phobia, and uh, and uh, and but but I didn't want to kill the slug, so I went to. A, a pharmacist or like some just like a chemical equipment store in Vienna and I said I need something that looks like salt crystals if you look at it mm. but it can't be salt it can't draw liquid out of something yeah. and then they looked at me and said like why do you want this this is very specific and I said like yes I want to put it on a slug but the slug can die <laughs> the slug should survive I need I need a crystal that doesn't kill the slug that looks like salt which should and, yeah, but sugar has a different yeah. So and it was strange because the, the 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 person looked at me like for five seconds, like, who the hell are you? What? Why? What? What is this? Is I know exactly. It's a weird question to put to someone. It's a weird question. Yes, and then and then she looked at me and said, "I know exactly what you need." You need, and then she went and then she brought me the crystals and stuff like that, and I put it on the slug, and of course the slug is wiggling because I mean. You you wouldn't like it if someone put like yeah. lots of weird stuff on your on your head, 
uh, without asking. <laughs> and, and so I, I, we filmed that. And uh, and in the end, of course, we 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 took the slug like away from the crystals and, and cleaned it, cleaned the slug with water, and everything was fine. And we put her back into the terrarium and gave her some strawberries. That was fine, <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah. So, but 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 in the end, like when the slug stops moving, that's actually a digital effect. So I just like slowed the slug down in the end, so it looks like the slug is dead. But but uh, but no, the the okay. wonders of magic, the of the, well, the wonderful magic of movie making. <laughs> that, that is good. Is I was gonna, I I just remembered that, and I was gonna ask you that question, like. Were slugs and animals hurt in the making? No, of this no, film? no, no. Sorry, All the animals in the film were already dead, or I got them from a friend of mine who's a taxidermist. So they were not specifically killed for yeah. for the film. Only the one, only the one ant, and that's my finger. I will, I will rot in hell because I killed an ant. But I think I killed more ants before that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it's 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 a very key moment. It's it's the, it's the very moment in the film, I guess, when I when I crush the slug, uh, not crush the the ant, where people are like, oh, 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 mm. ah, yeah, 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 yeah. For me, and... the key for me the key moment in the film is when he decides without asking her to to put the neighbor into this experiment and oh, trying he's... to give her tinnitus. That's the, for me the moment when the guy is just like. It's just like you are an asshole. This is like this is not how this goes. For me, that's the breaking point when I wrote it. But mm. for most people, interestingly, it's when when the the animal stuff starts. Yeah. Uh, no, I definitely fought with the neighbor because there's no mm. patience. Like you yeah. asked her to do this stuff, and then you're shouting at her, like, yeah. leave, just leave, leave, get out. And yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. like, and you can see the fact that he thinks he's justified. Yes, absolutely. That he's, and, he's, and I he's thought an, that was very yeah. interesting. Now, he's he's a, he's a he's a super entitled character. Super, like I mean, this is like where entitlement gets you if you're mm. like an asshole, you know, <laughs> if you don't yeah. know how how to how 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 to do as 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 the youngsters say, check your privilege. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man, yeah. yeah. No, definitely. Definitely, but yeah, no, I, yeah, I, I, I hope that, um, yeah, like people find this film because you know, I mean, I, I, I watched it and I, I enjoyed the journey. I, I enjoyed that, that is, this journey and seeing the spiral, and also, as I said, that it's different, right? Yeah. I, I can't think of a film like this. Mm -hmm. You know, because usually when I break things down, I try and put people like, oh, well, if you like that, you'd like this. But I can't think of other films made like you've done this one, which is great because yeah. it means it's something new. Yeah. Right? It's a new yeah, experience yeah. that you're able to have. And I think that's that's more compelling than anything yeah yeah and and because technically speaking i mean people forget about it but technically speaking it's a found footage film because i mean he's documenting all of that stuff yeah yeah, yeah. And, and i'm kind of sick and tired of found footage films and i thought like i want like if like if if only one person says like oh, oh another found footage film i no, <laughs> I, I did not want to do that so i was i was i was very very keen on that it that it has a different aesthetics and that it's in in, in a certain way New and mm. uh, yeah, 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 great like very, cosmetic I, 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 work as well. I will say, ah, uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, that that was that will look very real. <laughs> that will look no, very real. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I mean, most of the meat is real meat. It's oh my god, I can't, I could tell so many stories about the whole thing. It's, it's, we, we got a friend of mine is a butcher in the Austrian countryside. And I ordered like 30 kilograms of intestines and stuff. And I said like, put that stuff into your freezer. I know you have a freezer. Put like 30 kilograms in a plastic bucket into a freezer. I'll get it on Thursday. We'll shoot all the bloody stuff on Sunday so I can have it in my apartment and it can slowly thaw for like three or four days and then <clears> shoot <throat> the film. Yeah, He didn't put the things into the freezer. He just had it sitting there 
uh, unfrozen. So I took it home with me oh. and I had this like, I had the intestines in one of my rooms sitting for three or four days and they were, they were starting to rot already. I couldn't use them in the film. They were so smelly. I almost oh. puked oh. just like trying to get rid of them. It was horrible, yeah. And then, oh. and then, I, and then, and then, my co-producer uh, Yasmin, she went round the corner to the Turkish butchery and get some goulash meat and stuff like <laughs> that. I thought, like, and I was like, ah, I would like to have some intestines. They didn't look so great. Intestines, <laughs> intestines. Nah, no intestines. But in the end, it doesn't matter because most of that stuff is shot in macro lens mode, anyways, and you only see like something that is so big and you yeah. really don't know what it is so it doesn't matter <laughs> <laughs> stupid intestines that stuff i mean i totally understand why this is this is making you puke because this is just like the most toxic and weird shit you can imagine decomposing meat and intestines <laughs> 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 oh man oh my <laughs> <laughs> Good. I, I guess it's time to get a shower. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, well, have a uh, have a great festival in Wilmington, and um, yeah, great success with the film, Matt. Thank you so much. Keep keep uh, keep doing your great podcast work. It's uh, I really enjoyed it. I checked, of course, I checked you out. <laughs> ah, yeah. Thank you. So I will. Yeah, and I, as, as soon, of course, it's, as it's uh, as it's online, I will share. Uh, I, I will share it on all the social media that I can think of. <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah, no, I, I have, um, yeah, I'll send you a, a link once it's up. And where can people find you, man? Oh, uh, the easiest, I mean, with my strange name, <laughs> uh, it's actually pretty easy to find me. It's with my, my Facebook, Instagram, so people people can easily find me, I guess, and track me down. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. I, 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 I'm the only person with that name on the planet. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, it means it means Grenze means a border, and oh. Furte is a ford or like a shallow creek or ford. So okay. in, in English, I would be Johnny Border Forder. <laughs> Or Johnny, Johnny, the 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 Ford at the border, or something. I don't know. <laughs> oh dear, dear. Oh yeah. But I, I find that always interesting to translate these like weird names mm. in other languages that they are unpronounceable and strange and long. All the like the Finnish names and all that stuff, and they just you know like they just mean something like a uh, uh, guy from the from from the I don't know. Guy, guy, guy from the mill on the hill or something, you know, it's, it's always the same stuff, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was the same with a lot of English names back in the day. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That, you know, Miller and you'd have these names, which actually just was your profession. It, exactly. That kind yeah. of thing. I, yeah. I don't know what my ancestors did, like at the border, at the shallow creek. I don't know. Maybe, maybe they made it, bridges. Maybe they built bridges, yeah. or maybe yeah. maybe they had property right there, or maybe they were like you know like did taxation or something where people wanted to cross over or something. I don't know. Uh, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Go graphs. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Anyhow, so it's time to leave. It's time to leave. You're, you're a really funny person to talk with. I could do this for hours. <laughs> well, as I said, man, come back. Come back. We'll okay. we, we talk about your next projects. Absolutely. Okay. Thank All you right. so much. And bye-bye. <laughs> no worries, man. Take care. Bye-bye. Take All care. Right. Bye.